All right, some good news now. COVID-19 infections in South Africa have come right down. When the third wave peaked, there were more than 20,000 new cases daily, but there's now a daily average of less than 1,000. Let's look at the weekly stats with Ridwan Suleiman, a doctor and senior researcher at the CSIR. Dr. Suleiman, great to have you with us as always. Let's start with the daily average. How low are infection rates right now? Good evening, Francis. Um, the numbers and all indicators, in fact, have uh, decreased quite significantly and it's looking quite encouraging at the moment. Um, over the past week, we've averaged um, 841 new cases per day um, over the past week, and that's across the country. Um, that figure has come down quite significantly. Um, it's come down 39% compared to just a week ago, um, and it's down to 4% of the peak that we saw, as you mentioned at the in the intro, where we were seeing 20,000 cases cases on average a day. Um, so it's really looking quite encouraging um, if we look at, at that specific um, indicator right now. And we can see that the latest stats are in a different color. That links to the test positivity rate. Uh, let's go to the next graph and zoom in on that. A positivity rate of between 2 and 3 percent, I think it is. Remind us uh, what that means. Yes, yeah, so actually the average test positivity rate nationally is down to 2.9% at the moment, uh, which is really encouraging. Um, in fact, it's the lowest that this uh, value has been since it's breached uh, this uh, level back before the beginning of the first wave in early May 2020. Um, so we're really in a good place um, and we're in a place where we'd like to keep that test positivity rate. Remember, below 5% is the recommended level, uh, that recommended by the World Health Organization to indicate that uh, the country has the pandemic under control. Um, at 2.9%, it means that we're finding a positive test for every 34 tests conducted. Okay, so, so pretty low. Uh, Ridwan, we've spoken along the way and it's been a different picture in each different province. Um, the, the third wave has moved through the provinces differently. Can we now say, uh, and let's bring up that provincial graph, that all the provinces are out of the woods? Yes, we can finally say so, Francis. Um, if we look at the case incidence rate in each of the provinces, they have all now decreased sufficiently uh, and to indicate that they're out of the third wave formally. Uh, based on the current definition, uh, the end of wave threshold is 15% uh, of the recent peak um, and all of the provinces' case incidence is now below 15% of their respective peaks that they have seen in the third wave. Um, and more so, what's quite encouraging is that this is, in fact, the first time that all nine provinces um, are out of a, th out of a wave um, yeah, at any point during the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so I think it, it is actually we can maintain these low numbers. Um, and even beyond that, even more good news is that um, in Gauteng, Northwest, Pumalanga and Limpopo, um, they're all reporting the lowest case incidence rate seen this calendar year. That is very interesting. So the first time uh, since the pandemic began that all the provinces, are, well, none of the provinces are, are in any sort of wave. Let's look at the test positivity rate. Um, still relatively high if we look at the next graph in the Northern Cape, say, I think that's the purple line um, and, and the free state. Are, is any of that a concern? Well, the Northern Cape, as you as you indicate, is above 10 percent. The latest uh, measure uh, at the end of the previous week was uh, just over 13 percent test positivity rate in the Northern Cape. So we really would like that to continue its decline that it's seeing um, and move below 10 percent to, to breathe a sigh of relief in, in that province. Um, all of the other provinces are below that 10 percent level. Um, in fact, five of the provinces are below 5 percent and test positivity rate. This includes Gauteng, Limpopo, Mpumalanga, Northwest and KwaZulu-Natal. Um, and uh, the remaining provinces of Eastern Cape, Western Cape and the Free State are between 5 and 10 percent. Uh, but as you, as you can see uh, from the figure, all of uh, those trends are pointing downwards. Um, so hopefully all will move below that 5 percent recommended level. Are there any significant reductions or are these significant reductions re reflecting yet in hospital admissions? Let's take a look at that. 
Yes, they are. Um, as we know that hospital admissions do lag, uh, but following the sustained decline that we have been seeing in the confirmed cases and in that test positivity rate, we have seen a sustained decline. Uh, the last week saw um, just over 1,900 new hospital admissions across the country. Um, that figure decreased by 22% week on week. Um, and it's almost uh, at the low that we saw between the second and the third wave. Hopefully, it will continue its sustained decline as we see infections uh, continue to decrease. Uh, and looking at all of the provinces too, new hospital admissions have decreased across all nine provinces, uh, confirming that decline in infections okay. that we have been seeing too. Um, further, Gauteng, Northwest and Pumalanga are reporting their lowest number of new COVID-19 hospital admissions uh, at the moment uh, compared to the rest of the calendar year as well. And the final graph, unfortunately, still some deaths, uh, but the, the rate also coming down, Red One. Yeah, so unfortunately, we're still reporting 77 deaths on average per day across the country, and that's uh, over the past week. Uh, but promisingly, this trend is also declining, and it's down 28% compared to the previous week. Um, and if we look closer at all of the provinces... Um, all nine continue to uh, report a decline in the number of reported deaths as well. So hopefully this will continue to decline um, in all of the other indicators as we've spoken about now. All right. We've looked at all the graphs and I, I want to ask if we are able to tell what is actually going on here. Is this just because waves come and go um, as we've seen around the world that, that we've hit the, the bottom, as it were? Um, or is, is the vaccine program uh, playing, playing a role? Your uh, scientific opinion, please. I think what we're seeing right now is just a reflection of such a high number of infections that course of the third wave, unfortunately, um, and um, therefore high levels of immunity um, in the community. And that combined with um, some non-pharmaceutical interventions has dropped that effective reproductive, reproductive number below one. Um, and we see then that the, that the infections decline. Um, I do think that the vaccination rate is probably still too low to have a significant influence on the indicators, although it may start to be weakening the link between the a uh, number of confirmed cases and then the hospitalizations and deaths. But I think given the, the, the significant decline that we're seeing now, it points more towards high levels of infection and therefore high levels of uh, seroprevalence or immunity in the population. Um, and so we've reached probably some, uh, some level of herd immunity through both natural and acquired immunity currently. And then the final question, can that protect us um, or, or is there still concern about a fourth wave and, and more waves to come? I think the, the fourth wave, unfortunately, is still likely, given what we saw during the trajectories of the previous waves and the timing thereof. Um, it is expected that, that a fourth wave will be likely um, after about three, way, uh, three months following the end of the third wave. Um, I think there are a number of variables, too, that we do need to consider, um, those being how long immunity does last, um, what the effect or the impact of the vaccination rollout will be. We still waiting for, uh, for outcomes um, of all of the indicators by vaccination status. But I think the biggest unknown, Francis, is whether um, any new variants may emerge that may displace the currently dominant Delta variant. We know that the past three waves were all driven by a single dominant and different variant, um, and whether a new variant displaces the Delta variant and becomes dominant um, is really unknown and very difficult to predict. Um, if the current Delta variant remains dominant, we hope not to have as severe or as prolonged uh, fourth wave. Uh, but unfortunately, a fourth wave is, is still likely. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, crystal clear as always, uh, Dr. Ridwan Suleiman, Senior Researcher at the CSIR.